next on Investigative Report. Hollywood and television once believed it funny. The image of the abusive wife in face cream and rolling pin at the ready. But assault is no laughing matter, especially for the men who face it on a daily basis with a domestic partner. These men have been trained by societal norms not to come forward out of fear. Not the fear of physical harm, but the fear that comes with having someone you love locked away and maybe locked away from her children as well. In this issue of Investigative Reports, we delve into the numbers of assaults, the types of assaults, as well as the polished public faces and hidden private lives these women use to get away with abuse. And now, Battered Husband Syndrome, Women Who Assault Men Behind Closed Doors. We are inundated daily with news stories of women who have been assaulted by a domestic partner. So trust me when I say, this is not another one of those programs. This episode of Investigative Report concerns the barely mentioned gentlemen who have been physically assaulted and harassed by their wives, girlfriends, or dates behind closed doors. At Investigative Report, we have come to the conclusion that the reason men don't get as much attention as women who are assaulted is because of gender difference magnified by the assault. And there are some informal domestic violence surveys that indicate women are the aggressor at rates equivalent to men. And other statistics that show women are the aggressor of domestic violence in about 70% of the cases, if you can believe that. Now, from what we have investigated, about two in five of all victims of domestic violence are men. This contradicts and flies in the face of widespread impression that it is almost always women who are left battered, broken, and bruised. Men assaulted by their partners are often ignored by police. They end up seeing their attacker go free and have far fewer shelters to go to when they are thrown out of their own homes by women. Now what we don't commonly hear enough of in newspapers and the television is that men who are assaulted by their partners would rather not be seen as victims. That's right, they wouldn't be want to be seen as victims. For the misguided sake of appearing too weak. But in these men allowing themselves to be the passive victim of unwanted violence usually strengthens the female perpetrator's hand and emboldens her to become a more violent assaulter, a more violent aggressor. In a lot of cases we do on this channel to include killer wives, they may assault with weapons. So understand that the statistically reduced numbers of male victims we bring to you in this episode are butchers against these five factors. Number one, the men that are receivers of violence in a domestic situation don't feel that they would be believed if they called the police on those women. Now this belief is tied to society's notion that all the women are completely equal to men in all aspects to include aggression, they should not be hit back as if they were the man's little sister which is an extension of women are weaker than men and therefore falsely cannot hurt men in a physical confrontation. Number two, that these men did not want their partners to reverse the assault offense against them once the police arrive, which will get them arrested instead of she, the actual offender. Now there are numerous cases which an aggressive wife or girlfriend has assaulted her man and then flat out lied once the cops arrived on the scene. In these cases, the police have to weigh upon arrival a his story against her story. Now, because of this, the police arrest a man instead. Due to the example, one I named for you a minute ago. Number three, that the men in these violent relationships don't want their children removed from the home, which is the leading of most state child protective services organizations, or that the assaulting mother takes out a false protection order against the husband and she that she just assaulted. Now she gets them removed from the home by doing this and children for safety. Number four, that these men don't want to report to a male police agency that they were hit by their wives in order not to appear weak in the general public. Now the average male feels, and rightfully so, that his manhood is tied to his strength and not to his weakness. Number five, that these men don't want to hurt the women who willingly hurt them to start with because they believe themselves to be her rescuer or protector 
as she was hurt as a child. Now these men neglect to imagine that there is no rescuer fantasy in which the woman assaults the man that just rescued her. The husband and boyfriend in these cases unknowingly become enablers as women do in homes where the assaulter is a man instead. You're watching MNN, the men's channel. And finally, number six. Because the majority of these men were raised opposite of the way we raise females. They were raised that if a woman gets on your on you or hits you, that somehow it was your fault. Yes, these men tolerated undeserved aggression because they believed they deserved it for something that they had done wrong. Now in this scenario, a man has a better chance of being assaulted at home than by the entire population of the country he inhabits. This mindset is the most dangerous of all, not just for the particular man, mm -mm, but for society as a whole. How many times have you walked down the street and seen a woman either berating or assaulting a man physically, and yet no one does anything about it? Just as a misguided man in an abusive home, we say things like, maybe he deserved it, or maybe he did something to hurt her feelings. And my favorite oldie but a goodie, if mama ain't happy, no one ain't happy, right? But I tell you, it is past time to put away all these old tired lines and have these women arrested on the spot just as we would a man that we tackle to the ground for hitting women that we don't even know in public. As a society, we should be dialing the 911 button on her just as quickly as 10 people would around a situation where he attacked her instead. Now the only thing I cannot stand in life, and that is a double standard, that society follows like lemmings to the sea. But the women who hold uh, who would do this in public are not necessarily the same women who would do this same things in private. No. The women who would do men harm in private are the biggest form of coward. She pretends to be a strong aggressive when dealing with the men she professes to love in private because she knows that his love for her won't allow him to hit her back. Now when the police arrive in response to a domestic violence call, she feigns weakness in an attempt to prevent being arrested for assault or imprisoned by a judge in the, his face in court. She hides behind her gender for protection. She exhibits hatred towards one man, her man out of a global population of, count this, 3,929,973,953 men on the planet recorded as of year 2020. Out of that many men, she hates one. And there is no one and no type of justification you can give me for hating one person so strongly, especially if that person loves you and supports you. Now this show reveals for the first time the unreported class of closeted professional women who would assault or abuse their intimate partners labeled as professional abusers. That's what I'm calling it. These women have two faces. The one they exhibit with their co uh, co-workers in their professional careers and the public at large, and the other, a schizophrenic type of attitude they exhibit behind closed doors after they take off their power suits and respect for humanity. Now, in secret they use blunt objects to club their men for what they see as something they don't particularly like about him. Now, oddly enough, these women will work every day with men who act and have traits they don't like in their own husband, but they don't hit them with blunt objects. Yes, sir, they allow their co-workers and anyone outside the front door of their house to be themselves. In fact, if these women behaved at work the way they do at home, they will be fired on the spot. And they're aware of this. Now, I believe some of these cowardly women are taking out the pains of their youth or childhood on the only person that they promised to love, honor, and cherish, which is a shame. These aggressive behind closed doors, victims in public, cowardly women used boiled liquids to pour onto their sleeping partners. They withhold love and affection purposely, along with any income or professional skills they possess at home only. Now this behavior destroys a man's need to feel he belongs to a family unit, and a lot of guys won't get married more than once. Now this is important, because Mrs. Professional Abuser may be a college graduate or have credentials, salary or positioning where you would not believe she would do such things. She is equivalent to the television minister who suggests that you are a sinner because you do openly what he does behind closed doors. Now this comedian behavior, once police arrive on the scene, has sent many men to jail. Many men to the street, 
cost hundreds their jobs sitting in jail, cost men their children, and to add insult to injury, these men are forced to pay for expensive divorces with alimony and child support to boot, which is awarded to the very same women that abused them to start with. You're watching MNN, the men's channel. But what about the data collected on domestic violence? How do the statistics bear out nationally and internationally? Well, let's get back to uh, when the professional world started paying attention to men who were abused, which was not that long ago. Now, this category of abuse birthed its own heading in the 1970s, or what was known today as battered husband syndrome. Yeah, they have it. The most controversial aspect of female perpetrated intimate partner violence is the theory of battered husband syndrome. Now, in reaction to the findings of the U.S. National Family Violence Survey in 1975, Susan K. Steinmetz wrote an article in 1977 in which she coined the term as correlative to battered wife syndrome. Now Steinmetz conducted several empirical investigations prior to writing her article. Now using a broad-based non-representative sample of 54 couples, Steinmetz found male perpetrated intimate partner violence at a rate of 47%, right? And female perpetrated intimate partner violence at a rate of 43% which was not much different, okay? Now she further found that while 39% of husbands had thrown objects in their domestic violence situations, 31% of wives had done likewise, about the same. Now 31% of husbands had pushed or shoved their partners compared to 32% of wives in the same scenario, about the same. Are you starting to see a pattern here? Now there is truly equality amongst the genders in a domestic violence situation but a society who wish to blame it all on a big bad man. Now in that same survey she noted that 20% of husbands had hit their wives and that 20% of wives had hit their husbands. Her research showed that 10% of husbands had hit their wives with an object and equally 10% had hit their husbands with an object. The same. Now another study using a sample of 52 Canadian college students Steinmetz found males perpetrated intimate partner violence at a rate of 23% and female perpetrated intimate partner violence at a rate of 21%. So it's about a wash. Now, further investigation found that 21% of both husbands and wives had thrown objects. 17% of husbands had pushed or shoved compared to 13% of wives. 13% of husbands had hit their wives. 13% of wives had hit their husbands. 10% of husbands had hit their wives with an object but 12% of wives had hit their husbands with an object. Now in a third study, using a random sample of 94 people, Steinmetz found male perpetrated intimate partner violence at a rate of 32% and female perpetrated violence at a rate of 28%. Now further investigation found that 31% of husbands had thrown objects, right? Compared to 25% of wives. 22% of husbands had pushed or shoved their partner compared to 18% of wives. 17% of husbands had hit their wives. 12% of wives had hit their husbands. 12% of husbands had hit their wives with an object, but a larger number, 14% of wives had hit their husbands with an object. Now these findings led Steinmetz to conclude that intimate partner violence was roughly reciprocal between husband and wives, with a similar level of internationality between men and women. Now, women are as likely to select physical conflict to resolve mental strife as are men. Women have the potential to commit acts of violence and under certain circumstances, they do carry out these acts. So, where we had believed for a long time society that males committed more acts of violence, it's about equal. Now, domestic violence against men deals with domestic violence experienced by men in a domestic setting, such as in marriage or cohabitation. Now, as with domestic violence against women, Violence against men may constitute a crime. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a crime. But laws vary between jurisdictions. Domestic violence has largely focused on women as the victims and men as the perpetrators. Domestic violence against men tends to be unrecognized since men are less likely to file a domestic violence report. Now, why? Because of embarrassment, fear of ridicule, and lack of support services. Men who report domestic violence usually face social stigma regarding their per, uh, perceived lack of machismo and other uh, denigrating of uh, their masculinity. Now, additionally, 
Intimate partner violence against men is generally less recognized by society than intimate partner violence against women, which can act as a further block to men reporting the situation. Now, some researchers believe the actual number of male victims may be greater than the law enforcement statistics suggest due to the number of men who do not report their abuse. That's right, they do not report it. They just let it go. Domestic violence is among the most underrated crimes and underreported crimes worldwide. Intimate partner violence against men is a controversial area of research, which terms such, uh, such as gender symmetry, battered husband sy syndrome, and bidirectional intimate partner violence, provoking a great deal of debate. One argues that uh, intimate partner violence against men is a significant problem and underreported that domestic violence research and feminist academics have ignored. Now, this is in order to protect the fundamental gains of the battered women's movement, specifically. The view that intimate partner abuse is an extension of patriarchal dominance, they say, and that concealing violence perpetrated by women puts the abuser herself at risk of future escalation of intimate partner violence, in their own words. You're watching MNN, the men's channel. Now, researchers have demonstrated a degree of social culture acceptance of aggression by women against men as opposed to a general condemnation of aggression by men against women. So male or female intimate partner violence has been sh uh, shown to cause significantly more fear by society and more severe injuries than female or male violence. Or so we believe. Now, I have a show, Killer Wives, that will contradict that. This can lead to men not considering themselves victims after being assaulted. And on next realize the intimate partner violence they are experiencing is a crime. Some research has shown that women who assault their male partners are more likely to avoid arrest than men who assault their female partners. Now this is due to the fact that female perpetrators of intimate partner violence tend to be viewed by law enforcement agencies and the courts as victims. Now, in closing with this point, we want to delve a little bit deeper into the estimates of male victimization in the United Kingdom where there was a survey that indicated 9% of males had experienced some form of partner abuse by females, which amounts to around 1.4 million men. This includes stalking, physical violence, and sexual assault. Now, a similar U.S. study found that intimate partner violence are often slapped, kicked, punched, grabbed, or choked by their partners. Now, a growing body of international research indicated that men and women experience intimate partner violence in some similar proportions. Now, an example might be a recent uh, survey from uh, Canada's National Statistical Agency that concluded that equal proportions of men and women reported being victims of spousal violence during the preceding five years, now 4% respectively. The survey that were mentioned indicated small proportions of men, less than 20% of victims, will tell the police or health professional about their victimization, just a small percentage. Now, this is perhaps due to well-grounded fears that they will be scorned, ridiculed, or disbelieved altogether by their authorities. Now, a recent research paper by Dr. Elizabeth Bates from the University of Cumbria found that the overarching experience of male intimate partner violence victims was that no one would ever believe me. One victim noted, he said, I told my friends, they laughed. While another stated that he told police, and they laughed. Now, laughter is a common response to male victims of intimate partner violence, but a great form of protection for the women who continue it in the face of laws already on the books for assault. In 1997, Philip W. Cook conducted a study of 55,000 members of the United Armed Forces, finding bidirectionality in 60.60% uh, of the cases. Now, as reported by both men and women, the 2001 uh, National Longitudinal Study of adolescent health found that 49.7% of intimate partner violence cases were reciprocal and 50.3% were non-reciprocal. When data provided by men only was analyzed, 46.9% of the cases were reported as reciprocal and 53.1% as non-reciprocal. When data provided by women only was analyzed, 51.3% of those cases were reported as reciprocal and 497 as non-reciprocal. The overall data showed 70.7% of reciprocal intimate partner violence cases were reported by women only. 74.9% were reported by men. Now, 67.7% were reported by women, and 29.3% were reported 
by men only. So 25.1% were reported by men and 32 were reported by women only. The 2006 32 Nation International Data uh, Violence Study revealed an overwhelming body of evidence that bidirectionality violence is the predominant pattern of perpetrators. And this indicates that the etiology of intimate partner violence is mostly parallel for men and women. The survey found any physical violence, a rate of 31.2% of which 68.6% was bidirectionality, 9.9% was perpetrated by men only, and 21% by females only. In 2000, John Archer conducted a meta-analysis of 82 intimate partner violence studies. He found that women were slightly more likely than men to use one or more acts of physical aggression and to use such acts more frequently. Now, the telephone number for the National Domestic Violence Hotline is 800-799-SAFE. That's 800-799-7233. We thank you for watching. For Investigative Reports, this is Charles Rivers. Do not stay in a relationship where there is physical violence. Do not become an enabler to your aggressor just because she's a female. Get help. And thank you.